This is Game Changers Podcast, inspiring conversations with leaders of tomorrow. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Game Changers Podcast, inspiring conversations with the leaders of tomorrow. I'm AJ. And I'm Harsh, and today we have Rima Aluk from Remix Studios. Welcome Rima, how are you today? I'm good, thanks for having me. Thanks for being on, and you know, tell us a little, tell the viewers a little bit more about you who haven't really, um, you know, who don't know about you or who haven't seen your work. Yeah, so uh, my name is Rima. I'm the owner of Remake Studio. Um, For those of you guys that don't know, that's a bridal hair and makeup company. Um, We do basically makeup and hair for all occasions. So brides, non-bridal parties, everything in between. And that's like everyone. So not not specific. Not specific. Okay. Yeah. So guys, you heard it here first. If you guys need any like sort of a promo, but if you need any, um, you know, bridal or any sort of makeup needs, Remake Studio. So yeah, for sure. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Well, uh, so going off of your brand, you guys recently had a really big announcement regarding your new med spot. Do you want to tell like the people a little bit about that? Yeah. So before I actually started um, hair and makeup, my background was skincare. So I did an entire year of aesthetics, and I didn't really think much about it until last year when we started getting into hydrofacials and laser. Now, um, so our new business is Remake Medical Spa, where we basically not only do makeup but take care of your skin as well and what like what goes on in like taking care of one's skin like what's involved in that the biggest thing is hydrofacial um you really do have to try it to kind of understand it it helps all skin concerns so um aging um acne and basically everything that you de- you deal with and it's just like are hydrofacials like just for girls or like do guys get hydrofacials? No, you you guys should totally try it. We have actually a lot of um, a lot of males that come in. Uh, most of the time, it is their wives, you know, willingly or in. unwilling. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, their wives will book yeah. them in, kind of force them to go, and they're always hesitant. But anyone with skin does need a hydrofacial. So once they try it, they're they're usually back the next month. So what's like the science behind it? Like I'm just curious, like as like just a potential customer, right? sell me on this, uh, sell me on a hydrofacial, why should I get it? Okay, so a lot of people ask me this, um, and I made an entire story on our Instagram page under mm-hmm. hydrofacial highlights, just to kind of explain each step. Mm-hmm. It's all done by a machine, so it's not like a regular facial where you're using your hands, using your just favorite products on someone's skin. Yeah. It's all patented serums through the hydrofacial brand. And what makes it different than a regular facial is one tube is suctioning everything beneath the surface of the skin while the other tube is pushing serums that not only help with anti-aging but all other skin concerns as well so it really does more for your skin in a shorter amount of time right yeah i might just have to give one a try (laughs) (laughs) no we have a giveaway coming for you guys so stay tuned something uh, along those lines but yeah i uh i want to transition a little bit to i'm guessing wedding season like the summer is probably the business for you right you want to like Can you go into detail, like, is it coming to kind of a close now? How was the summer for you guys? Summer is crazy for us. Um, Our main clientele is Indian bridal. So what that means is we're up Friday, Saturday, Sundays at about 3 in the morning, getting at the bride's house at about 4, and then just getting them ready for their big day. I think we're the only culture that starts that early because I do have other types of brides from different backgrounds and yeah, no one's starting that early. So it is something that I kind of had to adjust to, but once you're into it, it's it's not too bad. And were you, uh, I, I think if I remember correctly, you said you were booked like the whole summer, right? Yes. So um, it's from 4 a.m. all the way until 7 p.m. most days. So you don't really get to eat much or sleep is probably the biggest one, but yeah. That's... And that's so, in, I guess, enlightening in a sense, because you always hear about, like, the, it's like the iceberg of success, right? Like, people only see, like, the top, like, like your clientele, your success, your brand, but they don't see, like, what goes into it. Like, all these, this commitment, this sacrifice, especially, I'm guessing, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, like, there goes all your weekends, essentially, too, Exactly, right? I don't have a social life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> uh, but, okay, so, you know, um, so going back to, you know, you said you did skincare um, training for, like, a year. Yes. So, like, talk about that stage where you were just getting into makeup and how this entire, you know, what's the foundation of Remix Studio now? Like, where did it start? Right. So, I had graduated high school and I was really lost, I think, like most people who finished high school are. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of social pressure. Um, your parents, of course, are always saying, go to Especially, university. like, in brown families. Yes, right? yeah. exactly. So, that was, that was, I guess, a little bit tough to deal with because... 
it wasn't exactly that I didn't want to go to school. I just felt like I didn't need it in a sense. Yeah. Um, so I did do a year of like aesthetics, which is skin health. Um, so I guess in a way I did do school, but not in terms of a degree. Um, so I did the aesthetics, um, didn't really think much about it. Like I said, started doing makeup on myself, did, then it turned into friends and family and it just went word of mouth. Um, my Instagram page started to really get a lot of attention once I practiced enough to, to be good. Um, so yeah, and then fast forward three years, it's, it's been great. And we're, um, I guess to ask, like, were you always kind of like artsy or creative in a sense, like growing up? Cause I feel like makeup to some extent, actually to a great extent involves a lot of creativity and like artistry really. Were you like artsy growing up or? Yeah. So, um, my biggest influence was actually my, um, elementary, um, actually junior high art teacher. So he, he was a little crazy, but he would always make, a, make us do sculptures and painting. And it wasn't just your average paintings. Like he literally had a mind of his own. Um, so he was always really impressed by my artwork and just playing with colors, pastels. It's something, um, I guess, a creative outlet that really I found joy, joy from. So it's nice to be able to turn that into a career now. Makeup, like you said, it is definitely artistic. Um, you are painting on someone's face and enhancing what they have and just kind of bringing it to life. Right. And what, because um, you said you were lost coming out of high school, right? And I can for sure relate with that. A lot of people can. But what was it about makeup that kind of stood out to you or what spoke to you about makeup that wanted you, made you want to pursue that? Um, I, honestly, I didn't think um, that it would have gotten me where I am now, um, but that was the thing. I had just started making, um, I just started an Instagram page and I found that it was getting a lot of um, feedback, positive feedback. Right. So I decided like if this is what I'm going to do, I might as well be the best at it, be the best I can be at my, um, at my craft essentially, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. So that's actually a really good point you bring up because... Like nowadays, like not to be like stereotypical, but a lot, lots of girls are really getting into this. Like they start their Instagram page and they'll do like five, six posts and do makeup on their friends, but then they kind of fall off on it mm -hmm. and they just, or they might not, they have a passion for it, but they might not go full out. So maybe, you know, cause you, you've become, you found success with makeup. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of like, I guess, focus or what kind of uh, investment do you need to make into being like at your level of makeup artistry? I do makeup every single day for hours. Um, so I think it's something if you want to see like a really big reward out of anything, you have to put everything you have into it. Um, and like you said, there are a lot of people that are starting to do makeup. And I guess even when I was getting into it, a lot of um, accounts, a lot of other people that had a passion for makeup. And it's not that I looked at it as competition. Um, everyone is trying to achieve what they need out of their own life. So I just, kept at it and wanted to get the most out of it for myself right but you have like really advanced levels of like certification too like like you were telling me I know you're kind of being humble about it but <laughs> like you have very like advanced levels of makeup training courses that you've spent a lot of time doing right well I did do a couple of courses but the thing I was finding is no one was really um teaching Indian bridal which is essentially what I'm doing right now mostly um so I guess now, um, fast forward, I'm teaching classes to people that I guess are wanting to do the same thing as I was. Um, but when I was starting, like there were a couple of classes, but I really do believe that I was self-taught and just from practice and um, doing something again and again, you really do find like your like your skill in that. Right. Is um, like going back, I guess, to when you were getting started, like where you like, would you just how would you learn? Would it be like through YouTube videos, things like that? Just trial and error? Or what's your what advice was, what was to like your process? upcoming artists? <laughs> Sorry? What's right. your advice? We'll get to like... that later, I think. But like, what's like your process? Like, how did you... Because I think the hardest part really is getting started. Right. right. And I think that's with anything. Like, right. even with this podcast for us, it's mm -hmm. like once you get a little bit of like traction or like you get a bit of... You get started, you get like the snowball effect, right. right? And I bet that happened to you as well. But how? what was your process for like when you first got into it? Like, what were your sources of inspiration? What were your sources of learning? Um, personally, I've never really been into YouTube. Um, I think mostly, um, what I was doing at that time was just getting models in, just doing a lot of free work. 
um, you're able to charge premium rates once you've done a lot of like free work and um, really practice and that's what I had done at the time is just calling in models and friends my sister is I'm always like painting her face so just trying out different colors and looks and just really um, getting a handle of what you're charging people for I think is really important you want to be your best um, at what you're doing right yeah so you know that's such a really good point and we kind of just talked about your start and how you got into it but tell us like a little bit more about like what does makeup mean to you like what feeling does it bring like what's what's like your purpose behind this in that sort mm -hmm. of sense so when I had started, um, I think the biggest thing was the fun of it. Um, just like I said, the creativity, the art, the colors. Um, I'm really lucky I get to do something that is so fun. It doesn't feel like work. I think that's why I'm able to do it from, you know, 4 a.m. until like evening time. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's um, handing the client, um, your bride, whoever you're doing, the mirror and just seeing their reaction. It's, it's a little bit scary, of course. You want them to love what you've spent hours doing um, but it's it's been a great response and everyone loves it and I think that's like I guess the best part is showing them the mirror and they're just so happy and I guess um, thankful almost that you made them look a certain way for their event that they've been looking forward to right that's uh, that's so crazy like I guess this transformative power that makeup has too and like being guys like we don't we, <laughs> it's hard for us to relate but like you're the fact that you're shining light on this that's really that's powerful I think that's like the biggest thing like even this art form and the fact that you're able to like make this your craft in a sense is very powerful and like transformative so props to you for that Thank and you. I guess empowering people mm -hmm. for that as well um, I guess I wanted to continue a little bit on like your career trajectory so when you first got started like were you operating I, I believe you have a studio now but were you operating out of your house or how uh, where were you operating originally yeah, so um, I made my mom um, clear out the den. Um, so she has businesses and she's a mortgage and a realtor. And she, she has, like, her the den was definitely occupied. So made her move out all her files. And I said, Mom, I need a space. The kitchen counter isn't cutting it anymore. So um, I did it out of my den for about a year. And my mom was actually the one that pushed me, maybe because she was sick of having 15 people in and out of her house. But she said, what, what's your next step? Um, and especially in Edmonton, we don't have a lot of people that I guess um, have a place where you can go and get ready um, and just all other things that I guess a studio can do, you can't always do from your, your house. So that was the next step for me was kind of opening up a, a space for people to come. Right. And was, um, like I have to ask, like what was your parents' reaction when you kind of, like when you were pursuing this opportunity? Well, were they very supportive of this or how did that go down? Yeah, um, so my mom has always been very supportive of what my sister and I wanted to do with our lives. Um, and she is actually the, like, I call her momager. She really is the one that gives gives me the um, push and I guess um, just... just um, Like a sense of direction almost. Exactly, yeah. And just, um, you can always fall back on your on your mom, right? Right, on your parents. like the support system. Exactly, it was, it was nice to have that support and someone that believes in you and more than even sometimes you do. Right. That's great because like, I feel like you're really grateful. Like you're really lucky as well because, um, you know, it's not as common in our culture where, um, you know, parents, like parents are supportive, but only for what they think might be like a viable option as a career. Yeah. So I think that's that's you're really lucky you have a mom like that, and you know you're talking about, you know you're talking about moving into this new space, um, and you don't have like you don't have a degree, you never went to university, mm -hmm. right? So, like talk tell us a little bit more about like the learning process of you know being a freelancer in your mm -hmm. house to like now having this huge studio where you're you're like a manager and like you're running the place, you have a team, and like that learning curve of like even financials and all that stuff, right? Right. So um, for me, I just did the makeup portion of it. And then now going into studios, so a, a business, what people do go to university to learn is is what they're learning in a business degree is how to manage, how to market, how to do all those things. So I had to learn all that without someone teaching me. And I think that was the hardest thing, um, just learning leadership, um, management, ownership, all those things at such a young age was, was definitely hard and just being thrown into it also. Um, but it's nice because I did, like I said, I did have a good support system um, to help me with it. And it's nice to um, be able to look at the bigger picture and um, not, I guess, move, move forward with everything. Right. Was, um, 
I have to ask this, like you said, there were a lot of learning. You have to do a lot of learning along the way, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you're moving to your own studio. You're what, 21? Like I just that, turned 22. Oh, 22, yeah. sorry. Like, <laughs> that's okay. That's still oh, very young. <laughs> that's still very young, right? Um, what was like the hardest thing or hardest obstacle you had to mm -hmm. overcome, would you say? I guess I like didn't know anything about taxes. I was like, oh, okay. Because um, yeah. they don't teach that. Anywhere. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Even if you do, like you just don't want to do them, right? Like exactly. it's like oh taxes. Yeah, like. so <laughs> I guess aside from taxes, there's a lot of other stuff that you don't realize um goes into a business, especially like we have a commercial space now. Um it's it's like a fully licensed running business and it's it does follow different rules than having it underneath um the roof of your house right so right. that was definitely a transition for me and just making sure quality is there um, people are coming to a space they're expecting more so just delivering um, I guess a higher standard so you mentioned quality yeah. and higher standards how do you maintain that when now you're at a point where you're even getting bookings for like two years from now which is crazy so how do you get that point from like you're doing it at your den and you're having 10 15 people now you're fully booked for like the entire summer you're having bookings What's like the aspect, how do you, how did you build this clientele? Because even online, you know, your social media, it's very, very huge. You have a really good, good following on there as well. So how did you kind of get this, um, I guess, build your brand in that sort of sense? I think consistency was the biggest thing. Um, I think I'm good at using Instagram. So just engaging with um, your community, right? So Edmonton's a very close knit um, city. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to be involved and you meet so many people and makeup really is word of mouth. It's not something that you're really giving business cards for. Your face is your business card. Um, the makeup that you're doing on someone is your business card. Um, so it's nice that I, like I've had so much support just in our community and a lot of people pushing me to just do better and I think that's really all all it is is people just coming together and supporting each other. Right. But that must be a challenge, though, like just maintaining that mindset for every client and maintaining, maintaining that energy as well. Right. And exactly. So like if if we're starting, if we have early mornings um, and then you have clients in the evening, you really want to do keep up that consistency and that quality because each person does deserve that from you. And we're we're very lucky to have people that choose us when there are other options. So that's kind of how I look at it. And um I believe you've expanded your team now as well, right? Like, you're, are you the only person that does makeup or are there other people on your team that do as well? So in total, um, including our admin staff, I have eight girls that work with us and it's been really nice. I've met them all through different ways. Um, a couple of them have been past brides and then um, a couple of them have, have also taken my pro makeup uh, course. Right. So, and I just realized, okay, you have a talent. Would you like to work with me? And yeah. it's nice. You, you meet people in different ways and... I think everyone on my team is amazing and I'm really lucky to have them. Is it, um, I guess, is it kind of a challenge finding like these right people in a sense? Is that like a big obstacle you've had to overcome too? Or I guess from a leadership standpoint, right? Like when you're trying to build out your team, like what are you looking for? Is it like this passion that you're looking for within people or what do you look for? Yeah, I would say passion is the biggest thing. Um, it's not something you can teach some someone. They have to really care about the person in their chair. Right. You want them to look and feel their best, and it's not something that I ever have to tell them. They just they just care about people in, in a way that it, that it just shows in their in their work. Right. I feel like that comes with like just leading by example, right? Like you hundred percent. Like if you have employees or you have people working for you, you have to kind of show like this is the this is the standard you need to meet. And just make sure they're doing that for you because they're rep at the end of the day, they're representing your studio, right? Exactly. So j we do a lot of training. Um, I always want them to be their best. I'm always practicing. Um, we really do want to keep um, improving our skills because there's so much more to learn. Even, even myself, I think um, you can always be better. And you always want to keep learning and just doing more for yourself to be better for your clients. Right. And what, is, like, what does that look like? What is... Because it's you're kind of you're doing your own thing in a way, right? Like there's no degree that will lead you to the path you're on. So what, what does self improvement look like for you? Like how do you keep working on your craft? How do you keep getting better, staying like ahead of the competition in a sense? What I, does like that self improvement look for you? I would say just putting in the work. Um, if you're like, it's really easy to be lazy. Um, I think it's easy to just sit and sit around and do nothing. 
um, but you can't resort to that. You have to just get up and just practice, just be better at it. So late nights at the studio, we're always just, we have mannequins, we have models coming in and just practicing, like just, we're not getting anything out of it except for growing our skills. Right. Yeah. So, you know, going off of this, um, we talked about like, you know, where you started, what's going on right now and, you know, your studio, what's been like the biggest challenge during this process that you face? Like, until now uh, aside from your taxes <laughs> <laughs> okay okay I was gonna say taxes I'm just kidding um biggest challenge I would definitely say like getting together a good team so I knew like I was able to um, handle what I needed to in terms of just making people happy making sure the looks there but really making sure my team is on board and like you said they are representing me so I, I did want to make sure that we're producing consistent work um, another thing that was really hard was definitely the um, setup and construction of our studio um, right. that was more than I could have ever imagined. Um, we were shopping for like a month straight of, okay, what couch is gonna look good here? And that was, even though it doesn't seem like it would be too hard, that was definitely one of the harder things um, with with the business. Right. That's a, I guess that's a perfect transition to what we want to talk about next. Um, so we, we're doing like this looking back segment, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you were telling us about your studio and you were showing us this video that, uh, we'll get it on for the viewers that are watching on the screen. And for those people who don't know, this is like a brand new segment we're starting out. So, um, yeah, I just forgot to mention, but this is a brand new segment we're starting out where like we have our, our guests um, kind of look back at maybe like a moment um, that when they started out and just kind of in a nostalgic way just reminisce and, uh, you know, talk about that mindset and compare it to where they are now. So, yeah. So we have this uh, video that shows like essentially the process you were going through when building your studio right what like what kind of thoughts were going through your head or like how did you turn this from I guess just a blueprint mm -hmm. to what it is now which we see is like the fully furnished studio everything well I guess walk us through that process a little bit like what does it feel like reminiscing so it started <clears throat> off as an empty shell um, basically dirt on the ground um, and we had um, our construction team, our interior designers, and we were just in there all the time, just really laying out everything, um, seeing it before it was there, I guess, where our spa room is going to be, where our bridal room is going to be, our office. Um, that was something I've never experienced. It was a lot of fun, but it was also a lot of stress. So seeing it manifest into what it is now, I think is amazing because I didn't have those expectations going into it. Right. Yeah. What's the feeling now, like, when you look back at it, where... You know, it's it's like you have a team, you have this beautiful studio, and we'll have the picture up for people as well who are watching. And now you're expanding into the medical spa. And did you ever think, like, over, like, I think it's been two years since you opened. Yeah, and uh, it's been since January. Since this January? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So it's uh, my bad. It's so, pretty new. That's okay. Yeah. So, like, s seven, eight months it's been. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think, like, it would grow so much so fast and, like, where it's been, where it's now? The nice thing is... Um, we don't have a lot of people with similar, um, I guess, spaces. So we do, we take care of your skin, but we also do your makeup. Um, it's pretty unique. So it's it's nice that we're able to do both and more out of the space. But no, I didn't, um, I didn't actually think that it could get this, this, um, this big. Does it feel like, a question I wonder is like, when you're getting this level of success, or you're building up, right? Does it, does it, everything feel very hectic in the moment? Or like when opening a studio, like there's no tutorial about how to do mm -hmm. it. Like is it a lot of things come up and you're like, oh, how do we solve this? Is that like a lot of the process is it very hectic? Definitely. And I think um, I've lost sleep over it in the past, but that's the thing about life. It, everything happens for a reason and everything is happening to you the way it should. Right. Um, with hard work, of course, right? And so... It, it is stressful, definitely. Um, it was easier to just do it out of my house, of course, but you have you can't limit yourself. You have to always think of the bigger picture and just want more yeah. out of it. And that's, that's like one of the things that comes with being like a business owner and being an entrepreneur because there's, that, there's always going to be that risk and you're basically working every minute of your life because it's your business and you're liable for everything so yeah you don't and get away from it like it really <laughs> it really is you um so that is also i guess a, a little bit of like the, the hard part of it yeah. the challenge is that it it does consume you in a good way um mm. it's always there you, it's not something you're going to clock out of 
Um, but I think that's the best way to do it. Um, instead of just working for someone else, if you can kind of just build yourself up and build your own brand up, I think that's, in my opinion, the better way to do it. Yeah. It, you're, and that's, you're right, like establishing like, your own identity, essentially. And I think, I think like the luckiest people in life really are those that find like their passion young because they can work towards it, like spend the rest of their life working towards it. So for someone like you who's already found it, like it's really exciting to see like how you're gaining traction already and then just even going bigger and bigger. So I like, I'm, I guess we're really excited to see where you go with this for sure. And like, personally, like, I really appreciate like your, um, like your motivation behind this. Cause you never once said like, oh, you know, I want to make money or I want to get really huge. Like, yeah, I obviously want to be successful. Mm -hmm. But the first thing that you said was, you know, just when you see your clients, you know, see how you made them look, just that feeling of fulfillment that, what are you putting out there? Because as a, if I'm a customer and I come to you, I can feel that, right? Mm -hmm. I, that you can tell like that energy comes off. Like, okay, what, what, is, what is this person looking for? Are they just out for my money? Or do they genuinely want to give me like a, an amazing service and something that they're really just at a level of high excellence, right? And that's the thing, money will always come once you put in the hard work, right? So that's not always the first thing um, you should run after. That will come once you put in um, the hours and you find your passion. The nice thing about life is you can do more than one thing. You don't have to just, um, you know, stick to one thing. So for me, I, all I know is makeup, which is nice. I have one thing and I've really just ran with that. Um, but you can you can do anything you want. You just have to be the best at it. Right, 100%. Is, um, I want to transition now because you've, You've gone through the struggles that you had to overcome when you were starting up, right? What advice would you have for, like, these up-and-coming makeup artists, someone that's interested? Because as Harsh mentioned, it's kind of popping, right? And what advice would you have for people? Um, I would say just to believe in yourself. Um, my mom wrote this on my birthday card this year, and she said, you have what it takes to achieve it all. And that just, I don't know, that gave me goosebumps. I'm like, that is advice for everyone you really do have what it takes to achieve what you want with your own life but you have to believe that you have that and you have to put in the work to, to just like it. i think just really affirm yourself exactly. like you listen to these people like that are extremely successful even like you and other successful people they they talk about you know believe belief in like very specific terms like affirmations you know actually journaling about this stuff like just having a vision board or just like imagery stuff like that like these things are really powerful where you know, you're, t you're engaging these practices to, that just genuinely expand that belief and make, like strengthen that belief in you to your vision or whatever you want to be. Yeah, you definitely have to see it and believe it for it to Consistently happen. too. Exactly. Because yes. initially it's going to be like, oh, you know, I don't know if I can get there. Right. And then slowly it's like a process. Over right. time you just start believing it more and more. And that's the thing. When um, we were just talking about opening up a studio before we had actually found the perfect place for our studio, it was the scariest thing. And... I was telling my mom and my sister, no, like, that's okay, we'll just do it from here. I don't have to have, uh, I don't have to pay for some, like, a, a space, and I don't have to, it really is um, your own head getting at you, right? Yeah. You, you kind of have to step over those boundaries to, um, I guess, really get to the true success. And how, like, because everyone has those moments of self-doubt, or, like, mm -hmm. they have those thoughts in their head that are like, oh, will I be successful, things like that. How have you been able to overcome those? What would you, uh, what tips would you have for overcoming that? Like the self-doubt and yeah, really like getting inside your own head kind of. You have to um, definitely be good at what you're doing, right? I, I think risks are important, but they have to be valid. You don't want to just take um, mindless risks. So right. I think um, planning is very important. Make sure the risk that you're taking is well planned and you have um, like just Every every um, problem has has a solution. Right, and I think a big part, maybe you can attest to this too. Like the confidence comes from like working on your craft and putting in all those hours, right? Would you say that definitely helps with? Definitely, yeah. Like overcoming those thoughts, it's like okay, well, I'm putting all these hours in. There's no way I cannot be successful, right? Right, and um, I think a lot of people were also telling me that it would be a good idea. It's nice to have that support. Um, I confided in a lot of my friends and family. And it's it's nice that people also believe in you. So I think it's it's good to have that validation, but you should also know for yourself. Right. I think, like, just to add on to it, this conversation, a big part of all of this where you're having these, like, doubts and, like, low points, then you just have to realize, like, there will always be, like, a, a rich life is always full of ups and downs, right? And, 
Like every, if everything is always perfect and always working out, that's never good. That's not. That's not going to be fun, right? The challenges are what makes the entire process really fun and overcoming them. And I think every low point just kind of um, leads to a high point where it's like kind of fuels that in that sort of sense. Could you like do you have, do you have any moment where like you had like a low point and be, maybe because of that like accident or something mishap, it actually le led to like a lot a huge improvement or like a high point. I'm very lucky that I haven't had anything that has really put me down in terms of like um, business standpoint. Um, but I think um, I there must be like some maybe like a, like in that sort of sense. I mean, like maybe mistakes, right? Like right. even we, let's say, um, you know, just an example could be even with the podcast, we we might have had you know some issues with audio before mm -hmm. and or anything. But that mistake, that low point actually leads to us thinking, oh, better, right? it's like a I, learning opportunity. Exactly. exactly, it's a learning mm -hmm. opportunity. So I think that kind of mindset where those moments of doubt and those low points just kind of lead to a higher point. No, I agree with that totally. Right. Um, so I guess just going towards like our concluding segment now with um, what does the future look like for you? What is, Obviously, you've launched like your med spa line. Um, can you expand on what like the future of Remix Studios looks like in the, and what your vision for the future is? Um, so I would like to definitely keep doing my brides. Um, we're getting booked up. It's, it's been crazy for 2022. Um, and for me to plan my life out, I guess, like that many years in advance is, it's pretty interesting, but it's, it's also flattering to have someone book their special events around your availability. So that's, right. that's been nice. Um, brides is definitely my main focus. Um, skincare um, has been huge for us as well, so hydrofacials, all of that. But I think we're also looking to expand more into the skin um, science of it. So there's a couple of things we have up our sleeve. Hopefully, we can talk about that in a later later time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you even got some jobs like internationally too? Like you're saying, yes. like in where 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 is this? Um, so I've been, you're talking about destinations, yeah, right? yeah. So I've been to um, Cancun, Kelowna, and Vegas for Indian brides. Wow. Um, so they yeah. fly you out. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, so that's been nice. I would definitely like to do more of that. Um, although you're in a beautiful um, place, it is still work. So it's nice to be taken somewhere and to be trusted, but you're, I think it's still a lot of pressure because um, you're you're essentially what they're relying on right, right to right. make them to make their 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 dream of their wedding come yeah. come together like you really are that last piece that ties it all together makes their looks come come alive so definitely it'd be nice to keep traveling and doing what i love for sure thank you so as we move towards a close um you know we always ask every single guest this question okay. um What's one word that you would say describes a game changer, or like for you, mm -hmm. where in this industry of makeup, what's one word that has been key for you to be successful? One in? trait or one quality. I would say artistic or like creative. Um, that's definitely what has helped me. Um, like I said, it doesn't feel like work. I'm able to just be in a really creative space and that has ultimately led me to where I am now so I would say that I think you touched on something really important where you said it's it's not it doesn't feel like work it's more of a fun thing mm -hmm. and I think that just really it uh, definitely is work but I'm lucky it, it could be worse right yeah. <laughs> like it is yeah. work but yeah. like it's just more like something you've always loved doing right exactly. yeah. and now um, you know you're so successful but at this point like that, I think that's a big part of where um, you get lots of your energy from right like exactly. even when we do this podcast genuinely just feels like so much fun for us because we get to connect with people like you and meet so many people and listen to their stories and learn and share this content and inspire other people but like that's where genuine energy comes from where it's like you wake up you jump out of bed mm -hmm. at 4 a.m there's there must be a reason behind it right? definitely so. like i have i would say like chronic back pain from my job i stand for like 10 hours a day every day mm -hmm. um and you can only do things like that if you if you love what you're doing so even though my back is like pulsing yeah. as I'm doing a bride I mean you just pop an Advil and continue <laughs> and that's, that's about wise it. words <laughs> quote <laughs> we're gonna put this in a quote oh pop an Advil and continue that's it <laughs> all right so yeah you want to do the close yeah to close off um I guess we're giving you a platform where can people find you online that's Yes, so follow um, our page at Remake Studio. Our Med Spa does have a separate page. It's Remake Med Spa. Um, so for those of you guys that don't get it, Remake is with my name, R-E-E-M-A, 
get it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Smart. that's that's about it. Um, I think we're like I'm mostly on Instagram. So for all bookings and things like that, definitely just hit us up on there. For sure. And if anyone who's watching this and anyone who's interested in getting this into this career of um, you know, makeup, like I know Rima, she's like very open minded. So you guys can definitely message her. Um, if you have any questions, ask her. I'm, I know she'll love to help you guys as well and share some tips that she she's used to be successful and be where she is. So, Definitely. again, thank you so much for being on and congratulations again on your new expansion for the Med Spa. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having Thanks so me. Much. All right, guys. Um, stay tuned. And just a reminder, we have that giveaway coming up with Remake Studio. So, yeah, more details about that soon. But thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon.